this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. So this video will wrap up my series on using a modified 2DS or 3DS as a retro device. And you can see I've taken this 2DS from stock to full custom firmware. And I was able to set up a nice theme. I was able to put in some badges from the original Legend of Zelda. And overall, in my time with this device, I have it looking and performing very well. And I have to say, for an older underpowered device, this really did exceed my expectations of what I was able to actually accomplish when setting this thing up for retro gaming. And this is actually made possible due to a series of emulators made by Bubble2K16. So we're going to showcase some of these emulators for you today. We're going to look at Genesis Play through Pico Drive, NES Play through Virtual NES, and SNES Play through SNES 9X. We're also going to look at another emulator called MGBA, and I'm going to showcase some ports that work very well on this device, as well as show you how RetroArch could actually run effectively if you have a new 3DS or a new 2DS XL. After watching this video, I think you'll actually be very impressed as to how well these emulators perform. So let's dive in and get started. So let's go ahead and open up Pico Drive first. This is the Genesis emulator. And the nice thing about these Bubble 2K16 emulators is they have a really good interface. The colors and fonts really pop out and they look appropriate for a 2DS or 3DS system. So we'll start here with a little bit of Castlevania Bloodlines and this is playing at full speed. We're averaging 60 frames per second and the emulator seems to be holding up really well on this older system. And you're going to find this to be the case for the vast majority of the Genesis library. Everything plays just really well. And you can access the menu for these standalone emulators just by touching the screen and unlike the native virtual console support, you actually have multiple save slots you could save and load from. And you really do just have a lot of options here. You can choose whether you want the screen to stretch or not, or if you just want the regular 4x3 aspect ratio. You can change the controller setup. If you're like me and you like B and X to be A and B on Nintendo, you can do it with these emulators. And there's just generally a lot more you can do versus running native virtual console. Now, I did run into some frame rate hiccups while playing Mega Man The Wily Wars for Sega Genesis. This is a remake of the first three games for the Genesis system. And things got sluggish here, and the auto frame skip actually kicked in a couple of times. And the game wasn't unplayable by any means, but it definitely felt a lot slower than a Mega Man game normally feels. And the frame rate could just be how this game is designed. It could be because it was the PAL version of Mega Man The Wily Wars. I don't think this was ever released in the US. But nonetheless, this was the only game that seemed to give me a little bit of trouble. However, other games like Sonic the Hedgehog 2 performed really nicely. And it's worth pointing out that under normal circumstances, there really is no standalone virtual console emulator for Sega Genesis on the 3DS and 2DS. So having this Pico Drive emulator really opens up a lot of game options for this device. Moving on to Virtua NES, this emulator performs just as you would expect. It's got the same interface as the Pico Drive emulator and it's very easy to get into your ROMs and start playing. There's not really much to say about the Virtua NES emulator. It runs NES games just fine, same as you would run them on Virtual Console. But you get the added bonus of save states and mapping controls and adjusting the screen size if you wish. 
As a result, this emulator might be a better option to using the virtual console if you have access to custom firmware. Now, the emulator that actually impressed me the most was the SNES 9X standalone emulator, and this is by the same developer, except I don't know what magic he implemented to get SNES games running on an old 2DS, but even special chip games will run at near full speed on this emulator. Here's Mega Man X2, which is one of those special chip SNES games, and this normally struggles on most emulators. But here, we're running at near full speed on a 2DS. Likewise, with Super Mario RPG, this is a very hard game to emulate, and there is some frame skipping going on, and the frames do dip at times to 50 or 49 frames per second. But for the most part, this game is performing surprisingly well, and even with the frame skips and the frame rate drops, it's still very playable on this device. I was actually expecting much worse performance with this game than what I actually got, and it's very impressive. Alright, let's take a look at the MGBA emulator and see how this performs. Now this is not a Bubble 2K16 developed emulator, but we're going to try a GBA game and see what we get. And unfortunately, with this emulator, you don't get very good GBA performance at all on an old 3DS. I'm just going to let this play for a couple minutes so you can hear the audio skips and you can see just how sluggish this is running. This is very unplayable. I didn't even get into the main screen to get any gameplay in. However, this emulator isn't entirely useless. It's actually very good for Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation. And one of the things I like about MGBA over the Virtual Console is you can actually put the Super Game Boy Color enhancements into the game. So whereas this Game Boy game would normally be in black and white under the Virtual Console, we have a full color palette here that originally appeared if you were to put this game into a Super Game Boy and then put the Super Game Boy into the Super Nintendo. And it's just really nice in this day and age to see these color palettes preserved. If I were to put my original copy into a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, I still wouldn't have access to this color palette because it was only meant for the Super Game Boy. So it's really nice to be able to use it here. And just for comparison, this is what Kirby's Dream Land 2 looks like if you were to purchase the game on Virtual Console or inject it yourself. And again, you don't get those color options. So MGBA still has its uses even if it doesn't play Game Boy Advance at full speed. Now, before I get into some of the ports you could play on a 2DS or 3DS, I just want to show that if you are running a new 3DS or new 2DS XL, you can run RetroArch pretty well. Now, you're not going to get good performance on RetroArch if you're going to try and run the special chip games like Star Fox, but Super Mario World and any non-special chip SNES game will work fine on RetroArch if you are using a new 3DS. I wouldn't bother using this if you have an old 2DS or an old 3DS, it just won't work well. Plus, a new 3DS also supports native SNES injection, so you can go that route as well if you're looking to emulate SNES on a new 3DS XL or a new 2DS XL. Another thing to note here is you will get Game Boy Advance at full speed running RetroArch on a new 3DS or 2DS. Since I had the new 2DS out, I figured I would give PlayStation 1 emulation a try using RetroArch with the PSCX rearmed core, but we got very poor performance with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is a pretty easy game to emulate. So unfortunately, PlayStation 1 is not possible on any 2DS or 3DS. 
Now you don't have a lot of options for ports on a 2DS or 3DS, but you do have some pretty good open source ports here. You can play Open Tyrion, which is pretty much available on any retro device you can get. And it runs very well on this wedge-shaped 2DS. There were no frame rate drops and it performed as expected. Same goes for Doom. You get a nice keyboard on the bottom screen in case you need to access any keyboard key that you would normally access on a computer like spacebar to open doors, but Doom runs as expected as well. And if Doom won't give you enough shooting, then you can also install the Duke Nukem 3D port and it performs as expected as well. And of course, there's also a Super Mario 64 port out there, but on an old 2DS, it doesn't really perform as well as you would expect. It's not unplayable, but there are noticeable frame rate drops. However, if you're playing it on a new 2DS or a new 3DS, this will perform at full speed and you'll get 60 frames per second. And it really does look beautiful on this device. I also tried installing the Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 ports, but every time I went to boot them up, it just crashed my DS. And I thought this was a limitation of the system, so I tried it on my new 2DS XL, but it crashed there too, so I have a feeling my files might be in the wrong place. If anyone has gotten these ports working on their 2DS or 3DS, Please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to try and get them working on these systems. And while I can't link to the ports due to possible copyright, I will leave links to the various emulators I use in this video. So that way if you have a 2DS or 3DS with custom firmware and you want to give these emulators a shot, you can click the links and download them for yourself. Alright, that'll do it for this video. Overall, I have to say I was very impressed by how these emulators performed even on this older system and this 2DS has actually become one of my favorite systems to pick up and play when I have some time to game. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.